All right, now let's go for question number 62. Question number 62 is a bit complicated in calculation, not much, a slight amount. And this is a very wonderfully framed question where the concept of de Broglie wavelength as well as atomic transition is included. Let's see what it says. An electron from various excited states of hydrogen atom emit radiation to come to the ground state. This one is normal. Whenever transition takes place from excited to ground, quite obviously the photon would be emitted. Now it says, let lambda n lambda g be the de Broglie wavelength. Now here what has to be understood is, these are not the wavelength of transition. These are the de Broglie wavelength when the electron is in nth state and the ground state, the de Broglie wavelength is lambda n and lambda g. And this one is inverted v, that's a capital lambda. This one is small lambda, this is capital lambda, but the subscript is still n. Be the wavelength of the emitted photon in transition from nth to the ground. So these two wavelengths are the de Broglie wavelength associated with motion, while this is the wavelength which is emitted during transition. And it has also been said that n is large, this data will be useful, you know, to binomially approximate or whatsoever approximation means can be used and a, b are constant. So basically we need to relate lambda n, lambda g and capital lambda n. Let's try to see the solution that goes slowly and steadily. we need to move up. So the first thing that I would be using is, let's try to see. All right, now what I will be doing is that, you know, P is equal to H by lambda. So we are talking about the de Broglie wavelength. The smaller lambda is the de Broglie, capital lambda is the wavelength of transition. Now why am I doing this? You will get to know it because I just want the energy and energy can be equated with this. If this is P, then kinetic energy is P square by 2m. So that will be H square by 2m lambda square. Now, this is a very common fact that if I want to calculate the total energy of the electron, the total energy would be related in this particular way, which is equal to minus of kinetic energy, so minus of h square by 2m lambda square. Here you need to be careful, if you are talking about energy at nth state, you will keep the wavelength at nth state. So I calculated the energy and the plan is now the difference in energy would be related to the wavelength of transition which is capital lambda. Now here what is capital lambda n? Let's try to see again. Capital lambda n is the wavelength when the transition comes from nth state to the ground state. That means the final state is n equals to 1. So let's just try to see the solution now. Going further, what I can see is that I know H C by capital lambda n. Now be very, very careful with this thing. That will be equals to energy at nth state minus energy at ground state because this is the transition from n to ground. So energy at nth minus energy at ground. So this is going to be something like this h square by 2m 1 by lambda g square minus 1 by lambda n square. So this is how I related the wavelength of transition with the de Broglie wavelength. Now requires some calculation skill and also remember one thing that lambda n is going to be much much greater than lambda g. That's for a very simple fact, speed at nth orbit would be very, very less from the speed at ground orbit. Reason, n has been given very, very large. And if speed as n is very less, lambda would be inversely proportional. So therefore, the de Broglie wavelength at n would be much, much greater than de Broglie wavelength at ground. Now, let's see some calculation here. I think some cancellation would also happen. Yes, so here's the cancellation here. So this will be C by capital lambda N is equal to H by 
m lambda n square minus lambda g square divided by lambda g square lambda n square. All right, now you need to have a bit of patience. The solution is a bit longer, but not difficult. Just don't miss the lead. Okay, I'll reciprocate capital lambda n divided by c is 2m upon h multiplied by lambda g square lambda n square and here is lambda n square minus of lambda g square. All right, now what we will be doing is that we'll be trying to put the approximation here and that approximation would be something like this. Capital lambda n divided by c is 2m by h and this is going to be lambda g square 1 minus lambda g square divided by lambda n square raised to the power minus them. Two things have been done simultaneously. First, I took common, you know, lambda n square and that lambda n square gets cancelled and the whole thing is brought above. Now the whole trick of the approximation is here. This particular thing is going to be very, very less than 1 because this wavelength is much, much greater than lambda g. So in that particular situation, this will be lambda n, the capital 1, let's bring c that side, that will be 2mc divided by h lambda g square and 1 plus lambda g square divided by lambda n square. Now we are almost done. All you need to understand is that this particular thing, the lambda g can be treated as constant. Reason, this is a specific wavelength at n equals to 1, while this would be variable for the simple reason n is the variable. Now, if you just try to see the solution part and the option and you just want to match with the option, then I see it matches most appropriately to option number 4. How come? You can see here a and b are the constant. So, right here it's very crystal clear this is going to be a plus of b divided by lambda n square because rest everything is constant because of the fact lambda g is the specific wavelength at ground state so that is constant therefore now we can come to the conclusion that the correct option is option number four so yes for question number 62 the correct answer is option number four all right this was quite amazing now let's go to question number 63. Okay, from the figure, it's very clear that question number 63 is from the semiconductor. Now, this is another topic which is not there in JE Advanced and is there specifically in JE Mains. And experience says those topics which are only present in JE Mains are really targeted when it comes to JE Main examination. So, this piece of information is for the viewers who will be preparing for the future JE Main. Now here, this is a diode and the reading of the ammeter, here is the particular ammeter for a silicon diode. Now you need to see the question hasn't said that the diode is ideal. If the diode was ideal, then in that case, the potential drop across the diode would be zero. But since it is not said as a regular convention, we are going to take the diode to be real. And for a silicon diode in a forward bias situation, the potential drop is 0.7 volt. That's a very common fact. And now, this thing can be, you know, just replaced by a diode that's 0.7 volt. That's the situation there. Now, 3 volt, 0.7 volt, 200 ohm. If I just calculate the value of current, that's a simple rule here. And that particular current is going to be 3 minus of 0 0.7 divided by 200 and that's 2.3 divided by 200 which will straightway give 11.5 milliampere. You need to calculate it but the calculation is not tedious. So this will give the correct option for question number 63 to be 2. 
All right, that was question number 63. Now let's move for the next question, question number 64.